Welcome back to SLP at UCLA. Uh, today we're going to be making the part you can see here on my screen. Um, it is a clamping collar, so what you would do with this is you put a uh, screw and bolt in here and uh, clamp something circular together. So let's, yeah, let's just get started. Um, so we have our drawing here and we have our new part file here. You make a sketch, I'm going to choose the top plane. You can choose whatever plane that you would like as usual. Um, and we're going to start by making a cylinder. And why am I making a cylinder? Well, uh, the best way to make a part is to make a simple shape and then start taking things away from it. So the simplest shape that we have right now is this short cylinder, right? Um, you kind of see it down here in this isometric view. So let's figure out our dimensions for our cylinder. We can see that the inner diameter is 35 millimeters and then we have an outer diameter that's nine millimeters away from the inner diameter so let's do that in SOLIDWORKS right now inner diameter is 35 outer diameter oh wait uh you could do it that way uh but it's easier just to do this right we have an outer diameter that's nine away instead of doing uh 35 plus 18. Um, okay, now that that's fully defined, we can exit and extrude this. And let's think, how, how far are we extruding this? Well, you can see here, our side view, got a nine millimeter extrusion. So let's extrude it by nine millimeters. Boom. Okay, we have the thing that we're going to cut stuff away from now. So let's start cutting stuff away. I'm going to make another sketch that goes on the top. I'm going to right click on the sketch and choose normal to. This will put me normal and perpendicular to the face that I'm drawing the sketch on. Um, and right now I'm going to make these cuts here. Um, and we can see the cut at the top is 21 away from the, um, the center. The bottom is all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a construction line. I'm going to make the construction line 21 millimeters away from the origin. Um, and that is already perpendicular. You see it already has the vertical uh, relation applied to it. Um, okay, and now I'm going to make a, not a construction line, but a midpoint line. And this one's going to go across here at a T. And if it doesn't give you, if it doesn't lock on for a perpendicular, I'm going to say it gives you that or something. That's fine. We can just say this is going to be perpendicular to that. We should fix it. And we're going to say that this length here is, let's take a look. Where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. 1.5. So this is going to be 1.5. And now we can bring these two points down and they don't have to be parallel or perpendicular or anything yet. We can add relations to that. Um, so we're going to say these guys are parallel and then they're also, or one of them is also perpendicular. And if you remember your geometry, if one of them is perpendicular, then both of them need to, need to be perpendicular. Um, and then I'm going to say that these two are horizontally aligned. Um, I'm going to make a line between them. Uh, you can see that we have one last thing to do. Just constrain it in the uh, y direction here. So I'm going to say this is going to be tangent to that. We should have a completed rectangle that we can um, extrude. Uh, extrude cut, that is. So let's just do that. Um, extrude it. It's already at 9 millimeters. You can use the uh, arrow to uh, make it longer if you need to, or shorter. Um, and now we have a little rectangle cut out of this. So the next part is going to be to uh, make the holes that go through here. You can see that here, right? It goes in that side, out the other. And the easiest way to do that is to make one side and then just mirror it across to the other side. So let's do that. Uh, we can see that we're going to need two circles, right? Because we have this smaller circle and a bigger circle. Um, and the smaller circle is going to have a diameter of four millimeters and the larger ones is going to have a diameter of six millimeters. So let's remember all of that. 
we'll bring it up later. Uh, okay, so I want a sketch on this face, uh, but I can't really go normal to it because it doesn't help me at all. So I'm gonna use this section view function, and it's gonna just it's gonna make this arbitrary thing. We could rotate it around until we can see our face that we want, but not anything else. With the check mark, and we can I will show you how to get rid of that. Um, after we're done with this side. Um, okay, so we have our sketch. We can now go normal to it. It's going to make sense. Um, so we're going to make a circle. And where is the circle located? Well, we can see that on down here, it's going to be from the inside of the cylinder to the middle of the circle. It's going to be 4.5. And from the bottom of the cylinder to the middle of the circle, it's going to be 4.5. Obviously, that just means uh, since both these sides are 9, there's going to be in the middle of this. Uh, so we're just going to do that though. Uh, 4.5 and 5. And now you can straighten it there. And this is going to be 4 millimeters. Okay. Uh, now we can extrude that. And that's going to go all the way through. So make sure that you can see the edge, the all, the complete edge of your cylinder that you're shooting, uh, because if you do this before it's, you know, out of there, um, then it won't go all the way through and it, it won't look good, uh, and you have to redo the cut. So there we have our first cut. Uh, so the next part we're going to do is going to make a reference plane. This reference plane is going to be for our next circle. And so it our next circle, if we look here, is going to be seven away from the center of the cylinder here, right? And it's going to start a new circle that then goes to the outside. Um, so since we're making a reference plane in reference to this face here, right? Um, we have to think about it a little differently because it's not going to be seven. It's actually going to be seven minus half of 1.5, right? So seven minus three halves, half of that. So this is gonna be seven minus 0 0.75, right? Um, so that's gonna be going to be 6.25. So if we go back into SolidWorks, we can say that this is gonna be an offset of 6.25. Um, but as you can see, this is in the wrong direction, right? It's offsetting this way. We want to flip the offset so it's into the thing. Great. Um, so now we have that, we can make a sketch there. And if you already have the plane that you just made selected, it'll automatically put the sketch there. Um, we can go normal to the sketch. And what we're going to do is going to make a new circle. You can see we already have this little plus in the middle. Perfect, we can just use that as the center. And we're gonna make this six. It's all uh, fully defined. Exit. And we could say, gonna extrude that circle also all the way out so you can see the edge and the face and stuff. There you have that. Perfect, right? Uh, so we're going to hide that plane, we don't need it. And up here, we can just click on this away again. Uh, and now we have one half of this, but you have to have it going through both parts. So what I'm going to do is going to make a new reference plane. And this time I'm going to say it's between this plane and this plane. So it's two different references, right? Uh, and this is automatically going to assume it's a mid plane. That's exactly what we want, right? So we can mirror this, uh, these two extrusions, these two extruded cuts over to the side across this middle plane. All right, so we're gonna make that plane. We're gonna say, we're gonna make a mirror. It's over here. Uh, the mirror face plane, that's the one we just made. So we're gonna select our mirror plane. And the features to a mirror, the way you're gonna do this, is you're gonna come down the drop down menu and we're gonna choose our two ex extrude cuts, right? Cut extrudes, we did, right? And you can, um, you'll know which ones are which because um, They'll be selected in blue. You can see, when I select this, it's that first one. 
right? And the yellow is the preview of what it's going to look like on the other side. Here's our second one, the blue, yellow. And then that's all we want over here, so we can say yes, good. And boom, now we have play, or a hole that goes through both sides and it has two separate diameters. So, I'm going to hide that plane. The last thing that we need to do, right, we've done all that, done that. We didn't use this, but this is just saying that both of them are the same. This is how I uh, assumed that we could just mirror, because if this is 7 and they're both they're 14 apart, then these must be the same distance. This, this side must be also 7. Uh, we use that, that, that. And that the only thing we haven't used is this six times one times 45 degrees. Basically, what this is saying is that there are six uh, different chamfer that we have to do. You can tell it's a chamfer because it's here at 45 degrees and it's a straight face instead of curved. Fill it obviously as a curved straight face, a chamfer is you know, straight, like cut off, right? Um, so if we go back into our part do bring down this fillet thing, get the chamfer, right? Um, so we're going to select all of our faces that we want to chamfer, right? And there's going to be six of them that we select, right? So I've selected one, two, three, four, and these are all different, different edges, right? Technically, and five and six. Um, and then there are two things on the uh, chamfer dimension here. There's this uh, one here, which is going to be the distance that we chamfer. And then here's the angle that we chamfer at, right? So if this was uh, 30, for example, it look more like that instead of, you know, that, which might be 60. Um, but this is 45, which is the standard one that we have in SolidWorks. We can change this to one. You can see the preview in yellow. Click the green check mark. And there you have it. This is our clamping collar. As usual, if you want more practice problems or you want to um, do this one yourself after this video, you can find the links and more in the description. Uh, additionally, if you would like to take the CSWA test yourself, please contact us on our Slack uh, channel, which will be also in the description, uh, to receive a free exam voucher. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.